Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a massive unhaul for you. So stay tuned. So Katniss has come to help me say goodbye to some of these books. I have 84 books to unhaul. Yeah, they've kind of been piling up for a while. All right, you gotta get down now. She wants all the love. <laughs> she said, please don't unhaul me. <laughs> so some of the books that I'm unhauling are books that I've read and they just didn't rate high enough for me to keep. I don't keep any book that I don't rate four stars or higher, unless it's part of a series that overall I, I give four stars or higher. But there are several books here that are books that I DNF'd because I just, I couldn't stand them or I read them and couldn't stand them or part of a series that I couldn't stand or maybe books that somebody gave me and I just really had no interest in, things like that. So let's just jump right into this. We'll start up here. Oh, also, some of these are because I have multiple copies of them. So this first book here, The Taking by Dean Coots. I was given a whole bunch of Dean Coots books a few years back and some of them I already owned. So I have duplicate copies of some. So this is one that I'm getting rid of for that reason. This next one is The Princess Plan by Julia London and I gave this 3.5. I did enjoy it but because it's under a four star I'm unhauling it because if it's under four stars I'm not likely to read it again. Next up we have On the Street Where You Live by Mary Higgins Clark. This is another book that I have a duplicate of so I can get rid of that one. Uh, the Servants of Twilight by Dean Coots. I read this one and I think I gave it like a 3.5 as well. But again, I'm not going to read it again. Then we have If There Be Thorns by V.C. Andrews. And I can't remember if I read this far or not in the series. I read the first couple of books in the um, Dollenganger series by V.C. Andrews. And I was forcing myself through the series because I was buddy reading it with somebody. And I just couldn't stand reading it anymore. I know a lot of people love this series, but I was not a fan of all the incest in it. And yeah, so I didn't get to this one. I just DNF'd the whole series. Oh, let's go this way. Uh, this is a book that Xander had and he just wanted to get rid of. It's a Warcraft Reigns of Chaos game manual. I think that's probably garbage, actually. <laughs> Then we have Dating for Demons by Serena Robar. This was a book that uh, was Becca's and she gave me a whole bunch of books. So this was one that I just wasn't that interested in. So I'm getting rid of it. Then we have News for Dogs by Louise Duncan. And I think this was in that set of books as well. And just not one that I'm really all that interested in. Then we have Burrow Hills by Julia Lynn Rubin. Uh, this was an ARC, but it came out like in 2018. This was one that I was interested in, but then after having seen other people's reviews and stuff, I just lost interest and didn't want to read it anymore. So I'm unhauling that. <laughs> we have... Mary Kay Ash, The Life and Timeless Principles of the Founder of Mary Kay. And once upon a time, a long time ago, I sold Mary Kay and I got this. That was a long time ago. Don't need that. Next up we have Top 10 by Katie Katugno. I think this one was, let me see, I think this was like a three and a half star as well. Oh, this is not one I put on Goodreads, but yeah, this one was like three and a half, I think. And it's just not one I'm gonna read again. Then we have More Beautiful You, A Study in True Beauty by Johnny Diaz. 
This was like a guide that my mom sent Becca and for like her 12th birthday and she wasn't interested in it anymore. So there's that. And that was, and uh, it was in the set of books that Becca gave me and I'm not interested either. Then we have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And I can't remember what I rated this one. I gave this one a 3.75 and I really enjoyed it, but I knew it wasn't one that I would read again, but it is such a beautiful copy. Okay, then we have Only Love Can Break Your Heart by Katherine Weber. This one I gave two stars. I was not really a fan. The main character is very shallow and she doesn't really get any better throughout the story. And then there's a romance in here that's just not good. It starts out sweet, but then it turns really, really cringy, and I just wasn't a fan. Then we have The Voice on the Radio by Carolyn B. Cooney. This was one I got from Thrift Books, and I ended up getting a different edition of this um, that matches my other edition, so I'm getting rid of this one. Then we have Reverie by Ryan LaSala. I want to say I gave this like 3.5 or 3.75. This was a really interesting one. I enjoyed it a lot, but again, it's not one that I'll read again. Then we have V.C. Andrews, Garden of Shadows. I do believe this was one I read, I think. Um, but this was, yeah, not a fan of this whole series. So throughout these stacks, you'll see the rest of the series that I had. Because I think I had the entire series before I ever started reading it. Then, oh, this is a Xander book. Minecraft Hacks Master Builder, the unofficial guide to tips and tricks that other guides won't teach you. Yeah, this was a Xander book that he was wanting to get rid of. Then we have Only the Stars Know Her Name, Salem's Lost Story of Tituba's Daughter by Amanda Marone. This was a book that I was buddy reading with, I think probably just my little Twitter group. And I just wasn't a fan and I ended up DNFing it. It was, to me, I just couldn't get into the story. It was kind of just boring. Uh, then we have Brimstone by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. There's no jacket on this. I don't even remember where I got this. I've had it for a long time. I do remember I started reading it at one point and it seemed kind of interesting, but I felt like I was jumping in the middle of a story and turns out this is part of a series and I just really wasn't interested enough in the series to get the rest of them. This is another Xander book, uh, Lockdown Escape from Furnace by Alexander Gordon Smith. Yeah, <laughs> that book's a little rough, but yeah, this is one he's getting rid of. Then we have Something Red by Douglas Nicholas, and this one is supposed to be like, it says an intoxicating blend of fantasy and horror. The claimed debut novel, Something Red, transports you to the harsh, unforgiving world of 13th century England. An evil and age-old force stalks the countryside. Who dares confront it? And I can't remember where I got into this. I mean, I got it like a pretty good chunk in. And nothing happened. There was no sense of foreboding, really. It was overly, overly, overly descriptive on a lot of things. And I was just completely bored and I ended up DNFing it. Then we have A Thousand Fires by Shannon Price. Let me see what I rated this one. I had to actually look to see what I said in my review because this book's kind of forgettable. I gave it three stars. Uh, I wrote, there's a trigger warming, warning for self-harm and suicidal thoughts. I didn't like or dislike this book. This book is all about a gang war. Our main character joins a gang to find the person responsible for her brother's murder and makes them pay. The main character, as well as one other, are into cutting. This doesn't get addressed as a bad thing at any point. And one character tries to commit suicide but is stopped in time. I never really connected with any of the characters, so that when one of the characters that we were supposed to really like dies, it didn't really affect me. I was kind of like, oh, that's sad and moved on. It didn't rip my heart out and make me cry 
into the book as it would have if I really cared about the characters. Then we have Revelations by Melissa De La Cruz. Uh, this was a book that Xander got for me, uh, but they, they had like these uh, free book things at school and he ended up picking this one up for me, but I actually already have a copy of it, so don't need that one. Then we have Secret Coders by Jean Loon Yang and Mike Combs. Uh, this is a graphic novel that came, I think, in an Alcrate Junior box. And either Xander read it and he doesn't plan on reading it again or he's just not interested. We got a couple of graphic novels here, not graphic novels, comic books that uh, we got on like free comic book day and I'm sending these to my friend Clint because I know he wants them and uh, I don't know, I guess Xander's just, just not interested. Uh, also I will probably send him this little chapter sampler thing of Witchy. This whole stack here is actually going to my friend Clint. Not all of these, just these right here because I let him look through uh, what I was getting rid of and picked out a few for himself. But the next one I have here is King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. I think I gave this 3.75. I really enjoyed it, but it's not one that I'll read again. Then we have Rick by Alex Gino. This was one that on Goodreads, I gave four stars, but it was really like a 3.75 for me. Um, I thought it deserved four stars, but it's not one that I would read again. Then we have The Speed of Falling Objects by Nancy Richardson Fisher. I gave this one a 3.5 and said it was enjoyable. I personally wouldn't read it again, but I think my son would enjoy it. So I might want to ask Sander if he wants to read it before I pass it on to Clint. Uh, next up we have What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor. I freaking love this book. I thought it was super cute. I think I gave it four stars. Uh, but the only reason I'm getting rid of it is because it's an ARC and I got a finished copy. So I'm going to pass this on. Then we have The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. I think I gave this one three, I want to say like 3.5 maybe. Somewhere like 3 to 3.5. Um, and I didn't even rate it on Goodreads. It was okay. It's not really anything memorable and I'm not going to read it again. So passing that on. And then we have Nine by Zach Hines. This is another one that I really enjoyed. I gave it 3.75. I actually have some quotes that I marked in here as well. Things that I liked. This is my favorite quote from the whole book. It says, because if you think about it for a moment, strange twists of fate are a daily occurrence. Everything we know about the world keeps changing. With every passing day, our world is revised into something new. Even before the summer of storms, our lives have always been in multitudes. If you realize that every morning is a new iteration, every day we walk out into a different place, every minute, every second is a crossroads. You can go this way or that way. The future is literally a multitude. Nothing is normal. Everyone needs a reminder of that. There is no normal. And I love that quote. But yeah, I did really enjoy this book, but again, not one I'll read a second time. Then we have Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. Let me see what I rated this one. So apparently I read this I think in 2019 and in 2019 I didn't rate anything that entire year. I was terrible with Goodreads. Uh, I want to say I gave this like a 3.5, 3.75, something like that. It was good, but again, won't read it again. Next up is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I think I gave this a 3.5. No, I gave it just a three. Uh, this one was just a little too weird and like grotesque at points for me. And I, yeah. Then we have The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. 
I think I gave this three stars as well. But the, the big shocker in this thing didn't shock me. I'd figured it out way before. And it was just okay. Okay, moving on from there, we have another Dean Coots book. This is Life Expectancy. This is another one I had a duplicate of. Uh, another comic. This one's Divergence. Then we have Stone Mothers by Erin Kelly. I cannot tell you how many times I started reading this book. I tried and tried and tried. And finally I gave up and said, you know what, I just can't. And then later I tried and tried again and was still like, I can't stand this book. So I, I think I gave it one star. But yeah, this just was not for me. It was, it's supposed to be a thriller and it was so boring and very, very, very wordy. Like, okay, it's kind of a weird thing to say when talking about a book, but it over described things much like something read. Um, it just would go on and on about all these little small details that were completely insignificant and just annoying. Then we have Retribution Rails by Aaron Bowman. This was an arc and I never got around to reading it because, well, it's a sequel. And when I looked up the first book, I really wasn't all that interested in it. So I figured I'd get rid of this one. Then we have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I ended up getting this like not great edition from Thrift Books. And somebody that was watching my vlog when I got it sent me a beautiful edition. And so I can get rid of this one. Then we have A Phoenix First Must Burn, which is uh, an anthology of 16 stories of black girl magic, resistance, and hope. Uh, this was edited by Patrice Codwell, and I think I gave this 3.75. I did. And there were stories that I absolutely loved in here and that I, I would love to have an entire book of. And then there were other stories that I didn't really care for. And yeah, I mean, anthologies are hard to get for and higher. Uh, but it wasn't bad by any means. I did very much enjoy it. Just I won't read it again. Then we have uh, The Book of Tormond, A Templar's Gift by Cat Black. I think this one's part of a series and I didn't want to invest in books prior to this. Let me see. Yes, this is book two in the series and I wasn't interested enough to buy the first book. I forget where I got this from. Then we have Damsel by Elena K. Arnold. I think I gave this two stars. I was not a fan of this book. No, apparently I gave it 3.5, which is weird because thinking back, it probably should have been like a 2.5. Yeah, if you go back and watch my like June 2020 vlog, you'll hear lots of thoughts on this book. But yeah, wasn't a fan. Bye bye. Next we have True Talents which is the sequel to Hidden Talents. These are books that Xander acquired and he ended up with two copies and they're a sequel to another book and we don't have the other book, so I'm getting rid of that. This is a book I bought for Xander and he has no interest in reading. It was Who Was Alexander Hamilton? Then we have Wonderland Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Yugo Ishikawa. These are mangas and I read them and I think I gave them like a 3.5. So I ended up giving Volume 1 3.75 and then I gave Volume 2 only 3 stars. It was weird and the, this was my like first uh try into reading manga which was also a weird experience because I was reading backwards and stuff like that but the story itself was pretty weird and I just didn't figure I would continue with the series. Then we have Together We Caught Fire by Eva V. Gibson. Uh, this was an arc that I got and I ended up getting a finished copy so I don't need that one. Next up we have Paper Towns by John Green. I ended up giving this 3.5. I enjoyed 
most of the book and then the last few chapters really fell flat and were very disappointing for me and yeah then these are books of xanders we have yeti files meet the big fee and attack of the kraken uh, these are graphic novels that came as i think extra books in alcrate juniors and he's read them and doesn't plan on reading them again so getting rid of those we have blood on the river jamestown 1607 by eliza carbone this was a book that he had to read for school last year and doesn't want to read it again. Nighttime, Too Dark to See by Todd Strasser. Uh, I guess he's read it maybe or just not interested. I don't know. Okay. Then we have uh, Bad Reception and Homefront by uh, S.C. Wright. And let me see which one's first. So Bad Reception is book one and Homefront is book two in her Sanctuary series. The author was so kind to send these to me. Um, and the first one I gave, I want to say like a 3.5, a 3.75 maybe. I think it was a 3.5 though. And then she sent me the second one and I gave it one star. I kind of hated it. I like the main character is the same main character in both and she was a little immature in this one but it wasn't bad and you know I still enjoyed this book a lot but then in this one she was just awful and annoying and immature and like there were so many things in this book that just annoyed me and I thought were really just stupid and <laughs> It, it like th this book literally angered me and for the longest time whenever somebody would ask me about like my least favorite book ever this is the book that I would say and yeah <laughs> so these are going away uh, next up is Spirit Bound a Vampire Academy novel by Rochelle Mead this is like a library edition and I think it was like a yeah a discarded book from the library but I have another copy of this book so I don't need this one then we have A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Moss I ended up with multiple copies of this as well so I don't need that then we have An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson I think I gave this 3.5 I did and I said it was good but it didn't like blow me away and then we have Buffy the Vampire Slayer volume 1 high school is hell and when Clint saw this in my stack of books to get rid of he was really surprised because I am a huge Buffy fan and I think because I am such a huge Buffy fan it's why I wasn't the biggest fan of this because it kind of like did a reboot of Buffy but all the same characters and everything but in like our time now I wasn't really a fan of some of the changes that they made I did still enjoy it but I gave it a 3.75 there were there are several other Buffy graphic novels that I enjoy enjoy much more and so I'm getting rid of this one then we have let me scoot over a little bit we have high voltage danger lab oh Nick and Tesla's high voltage danger lab a mystery with electromagnets burglar alarms and other gadgets you can build yourself so it's a novel but it, and there's like there's some graphics throughout there's also projects that you can do throughout it as well i thought it was pretty cool um it was part of one of our tinker crates but i guess sander's not interested and then we have the great gatsby by f scott fitzgerald i think i gave this like three stars it was just okay and i'm not gonna read it again Oh, then we have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I gave this two stars. I was not a fan. Uh, just literally everybody's cheating on everybody. And yeah, 
just not a fan. Next up we have Tiny by Kim Hooper. This is like an adult fiction. It was not bad. I think I gave it like a 3.5. It was in the year that I wasn't rating anything. Um, but I do recall enjoying this story. But again, not one I'd read again. Oh, next we have Incarceron and Safiq by Katherine Fisher. I want to say I gave this like 3.5. And on Goodreads, this one also got a 3.5. But this one got a 3.5 because I gave it two stars and Marty gave it five stars. And that equaled or averaged out to three and a half stars. He very much was a fan. I was not. It was a little too weird for me. It's about a incarceration is a prison, and in Safiq, the prison is well sentient and decides it doesn't want to be in prison anymore. But it is a prison, and so it thinks it needs to become it needs a body so that it can escape itself. Yeah. <laughs> Then we have All the Truth That's In Me. I think I gave this two stars. Yeah, I gave it two stars. And my review is just meh. <laughs> I recall this being a struggle to stay interested in to get to the end. There were many times I thought about DNFing, DNFing it. Uh, but I pushed through and I ended up, yeah, just giving it two stars. Next up is Rebel of the Sands by, by Alwyn Hamilton. I think I gave this like 3.5. Uh, it was fine. I just don't plan on continuing the series. Then I have Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. Uh, this was one that Marty got me as part of my uh, Advent Christmas he did for me. But then I ended up with a another copy in I think an owl crate box and I liked that cover better and it had sprayed edges and stuff so I'm getting rid of this one then we have Black Canary Ignite by Meg Cabot this is a graphic novel I think I gave this like 3.5 stars something like that and then I passed it on to Xander and I don't know if he read it or not um, but he wanted to get rid of it as well uh, then he has Fart Squad, Fartosaurus Rex. He said he did read this and he didn't really like it, so getting rid of that. Then we have Macbeth, a Shakespeare story by Andrew Matthews and Tony Ross. This was okay. I think I gave it like a 3 star, 3.5. It's like a kid's version pretty much of Macbeth. I mean, it does a great job of, like, summarizing Macbeth up and making it easy to understand. Uh, I have a whole bunch of these little books, and, yeah, I read it. I think I passed it on to Xander, and he didn't want it, so, yeah. Okay, next up is The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. And I gave this two stars. I read the entire thing, and I was just like, what was the point of this book? There was no plot at all. There was no climax to the story. There was no point to this book. And I felt like once I finished it, I was like, that was just a complete waste of time. <laughs> so I gave it two stars. Uh, then we've got Seeds of Yesterday by V.C. Andrews. Again, getting rid of that whole series. A uh, Tale of Two Cities, uh, Great Illustrated Classics by Charles Dickens. Dickens uh, Looks like this. I think I gave this one like three, three and a half stars, something like that. Um, but yeah, I won't be reading it again. <laughs> Drink Slay Love by Sarah Beth Durst. I can't remember how far I got into this and I was just like, okay, this is just stupid. And I, I can't, I can't make myself read this, so. <laughs> Had to get rid of it. Uh, then we have Testament of Feats, uh, Night Scream Journeys Book 1 by K.H. Jones. I don't think I actually rated this one on Goodreads. 
uh, it was sent to me by the author and it was just very much not like anything I would want to read. Uh, I did try to read it for a little bit, but it was just, just not for me. I think it's sort of like a, a bounty hunter type thing, but then there's like paranormal stuff in there as well. And I don't know, it, it just wasn't, I didn't vibe with it. Uh, Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Again, I think I gave this like 3.5, so I'm not going to read it again. This is Xander's. It's Where's Waldo? Games on the Go. Uh, Throw Like a Girl by Sarah Henning. Again, I think I gave this like 3.5, something like that. It wasn't bad. I was expecting it to be pretty bad, but it actually wasn't bad and I enjoyed it, but I won't read it again. Uh, Flowers in the Attic and Petals on the Wind by V.C. Andrews. I did read this entire thing and wasn't a fan. What Did I rate this? I can't remember if this was one that, uh, if it was during the year when I wasn't rating anything or not. I did not rate it. But I know that my rating in the beginning started out like just meh and then it went down from there. <laughs> And then the last book here is a hardcover of The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier, and it's simply because I have another edition of it. <sighs> so those are all 84 books that I plan on unhauling. Have you read any of these? Did you like them? Did you not? Do you agree with my assessment of them? Is there any that you think I should reconsider unhauling? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!